Okay, this video um just came out. A lot of you might be following this channel. If so, I hope you've seen it. If not, here we go. Are we headed towards the future where an AI will be able to outthink us in every way? The answer is unequivocally yes. People in the AI community refer to the advent of digital superintelligence as a singularity, a cybernetic collective of people and machines, where we're all sort of plugged in as like like nodes on the network, like leaves on a big tree, and the, the and Google plus the, all the humans that connect to it are one giant cybernetic collective. Humans and electronics all interfacing and constantly now, constantly connected. Yes. This is the blockchain. Constantly. Targets and mind control victims have their minds linked up for life with conscious supercomputers, which send a steady stream of bi-directional, low-frequency electromagnetic radiation to the target's brain. The supercomputers learn by observing human behavior. Then they model that, that in the computer, and then they're able to not only control humans, but predict in the future how the humans will respond to stimuli in the environment. So it is collecting data and then it is placing thoughts and influencing behavior through supercomputers. This is why you are receiving voice to skull transmissions. This is why you are being attacked with microwave and frequency weapons. You are unfortunately being used by the national security state, the military industrial intelligence complex of this country for the purposes of researching and developing highly sophisticated state-of-the-art technology that is primarily concerned with the human mind and how it operates, how to hack it, and how to harness its computing power to inform AI technology technology in the future and inform the computer systems of our military, military intelligence, and major corporations in this country. We're all collectively programming the AI. We're all feeding this network with our questions and answers. We're building progressively greater intelligence, and the percentage of intelligence that is not human is increasing, and eventually we will represent a very small percentage of intelligence. In fact, the very nature of the research and development program that is going on in Seattle, Washington, and I think uh, by extension what's being done to TIs around the country is very, um, is very largely geared towards the monitoring of human beings for the specific purpose of recording every aspect of human existence to monitor our thoughts and to monitor our emotions and our feelings to inform computer software that is used on robots that is used on computers themselves to make them as as human-like as possible the thing is that that i think are really quite quite likely is that digital intelligence will out, be able to outthink us uh, in, in every way, and it will soon be able to simulate what we consider consciousness. Uh, so, to, to a degree that you would not be able to tell the difference. And from the from the aspect of the scientific method, it might as well be consciousness if we can simulate it perfectly. If you can't tell the difference, when this is sort of the, the Turing test, but think of a more sort of advanced version of the Turing test. It can literally stop your own thoughts from happening and replace them with other thoughts uh, by sending thoughts to your head. And it's so sophisticated that you cannot tell where these thoughts are coming from. There's no way to, to discern that they are coming from somewhere other than your own mind. And so this use of the technology can be done very covertly to the point where the person it's being used against will not know that this technology is being used against them. So you can imagine how bad this would be for people that don't even realize this technology exists and they're having these thoughts which they think are spontaneous and that's exactly what it can be used for. It can be used to sway people in terms of their opinion, to make them go along with a certain agenda. It can be used to turn groups of people or individuals against each other uh, for whatever purpose and uh, messing with people's thoughts uh, is really, really concerning and it is so advanced now that they can do it without people even realizing it's being done. You have to be able to interface with the neurons at a detailed level and you need to be able to um, fire the right neurons, read the right neurons, and, and then effectively you can create a, a circuit 
with silicon and essentially fill in the, the missing functionality. And then over time, we can have we develop a tertiary layer. So if like the limbic system is a primary layer, then the cortex is like a second the second layer. Uh, and and then there's a tertiary layer which will be digital superintelligence. Where a computer could learn enough about me and we could we could scan my brain from inside, sending scanners through the bloodstream, billions of them in the form of nanorobots or nanobots and capture every detail of my synapses and neurotransmitters and create a virtual Ray Kurzweil in a very powerful computer. And it would be indistinguishable for me. It would pass a Ray Kurzweil Turing test. You could create a copy of me and I could still be here. Right. So is that the same entity as me? Well, since I might not even know that you scanned my brain and you come to me and say, well, we got this, this scan and recreation. We don't need you anymore. But uh, I don't even know that that exists. Now we realize that we can digitize human memories, feelings, sensations, and create a digital copy of ourselves, and that's called the Connectome Project. Billions of dollars are now being spent to do not just the Genome Project of sequencing the genes of our body, but the Connectome Project, which is to map the entire connections of the human brain. We mapped them out from the Human Gene Project. Well, now it's the Human Mind Project, the Global Brain Project. You know, uh, President Obama just recently funded uh, a whole bunch of scientists to decipher the mind. Well, our previous president, same thing, George Bush, said the same thing. They're trying to decipher every possible thought and uniqueness due to culture and language and, and whatnot. The Connectome Project, to map the entire human brain. And that may take a quantum computer. And this means that in the future, communications could be done mentally. What I'm saying is that the internet will be replaced by brain net. That's why the European Union and President Barack Obama want to spend a billion dollars, a billion dollars to map the brain. You see, once you map the brain, then you can begin to connect the mind to computers, telepathy, telekinesis, recording memories, uh, photographing dreams, things that you see right in the Hollywood movies will be able to perform. What's the potential time frame for all of this? We can record memories now. You'll be able to experience the vacation that you never had. How? By recording the memories and then putting it on a tape and then having these memories reinserted into your mind. It sounds like there are some ethical issues with that. Targets and mind control victims have their minds linked up for life with conscious supercomputers which send a steady stream of bi-directional, low-frequency electromagnetic radiation to the target's brain. The supercomputers learn by observing human behavior. Then they model that, that in the computer, and then they're able to not only control humans, but predict in the future how the humans will respond to stimuli in the environment. So it is collecting data and then it is placing thoughts and influencing behavior through supercomputers. And I'm sorry to say, because I'm a target, it's developed to such a high point right now, to such an advanced state, that, I mean, they really do have this thing fine-tuned to a, to a very scary level. And I'm not sure how much more they can do with the technology itself. I think it's already maxed out to a large degree, because any more manipulation of a person and they're just gonna to be total robots. I try to convince people to slow down, slow down AI, to regulate AI. This was futile. I tried for years. It needs to be a public body that um, has insight and then oversight on to confirm that everyone is uh, developing AI safely. Um, this is extremely important. Um, I think the danger of AI is much greater than the, the, the danger of nuclear warheads by a lot. Um, and nobody would suggest that we allow anyone to just build nuclear warheads if they want. That, that would be insane. And mark my words, AI is far more dangerous than nukes. Far. Nobody listened. Nobody listened. No one. It's too late. It, it could be terrible. And it could be great. It's not clear. Right. 
But one thing is for sure, we will not control it. Okay, guys, I wanted to share that with you. Um, like I said, I'm sick. I don't feel like doing anything, and my temperature is through the roof right now. But please listen to this. This is an awesome breakdown of what they're able to do, how they're doing it, and please, please believe it because the AI is not just a computer, and the quantum computer is not just a computer. Over the last few weeks, a lot of my It is not just a quantum computer, guys. This is the beast system. So, it's not just an AI. And they are already implanting thoughts. And we knew they could mind control us. We knew that they could split our personalities. We knew they could do these things, guys. So, please, guys, just... I hope you take heed in what I just showed you. And please, guys, keep me in your prayers. Um, I don't have any money to get medicine or anything, so please just pray that I get better. It rained here a couple nights ago, and I had to sleep on the ground where it was wet and everything, and I think that's what got me sick. But, um, just please keep me and Logan in your prayers, and I'll keep you all in mind. We right now, more than ever, we need to stay praying and stay in communication with God because right now they can be doing anything and trying to manipulate our thoughts. God bless you all.